And then, I, oh my gosh, that was so bad. So how can I get gallery view on my iPad? Anybody Zoom experts here? No. <laughs> okay, no problem. I, participants, let's do this. Oh my Lord. Well, can I just not see the screen? Like, is it gonna show? I just wanna see all your faces. That's the biggest thing for me. Oh, there's no way. Okay, so we got Christian on here. So there's, all right, let me see here. I've got some things broken down, but what I want to do is I don't want to get this thing going. And then you guys think uh, I'm trying to be arrogant because I've sat down in some training classes and I'm just like, dude, I don't want to hear about you. I want to learn something. So Christian, I know you're there. So if you can tell them one thing about me, what would it be? I'm going to have you introduce me a little bit. I'm going to see if there's anybody else on here. Christian, don't leave me hanging like this. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Um, one thing about Blake is you, you, you're willing to help. Like you're willing to sit down and explain stuff. You're, you're a great guy. You're outgoing. He loves cigars and bourbon. There you go. That's pretty much spot on. You pretty much nailed it. Um, I also, this is the part where I'm going to toot my own horn, I guess. The, uh, in 2019, I won Rookie of the Year uh, for our local board. So it means I beat everybody in SOMO that year that had applied for Rookie of the Year. I did that by selling 30 deals. Um, I was the one of the PC coaches of the production productivity program last year. Um, I actually just stepped away from that in January. I believe, and Nicole can correct me, we were like one of the most profitable, if not the most profitable program. Uh, definitely, we were the only coaching program that was optional. Uh, so you could choose to join it. It wasn't a requirement. And people stepped into that. And I mean, they crushed it. Like Chris is crushing it. There's a lot of people that crushed it. Um, and then I started a team last year. And my team closed 138 units at about $29 million in volume. And... I say that because the only way that that gets done is if you know how to set goals and then like, that's it. Like, this is going to sound so crazy. And I will go through the slides because you guys have the slides. Um, and then as we go through, if you guys have questions, I need you guys to ask them. Um, Cause we will be here for about 30 minutes. If I bust through these slides and just go through the slides as to what, um, KW wants to say, and then you guys are supposed to, we're supposed to, uh, practice scripts and then we're supposed to lead generate which we will do but we will do it in a different way but i want you guys to have your goal ahead of time um so that you know why you're doing what you're doing which we'll get into that in a moment if that made any sense um does anybody have questions before we get started like if and it can be about anything there's a bit about goal setting if you guys have any questions about anything at all now is the time I'm gonna write it down and I will try and work it into this session. And if I can't answer it, I won't, but I've yet to find a question that I can't find the answer to. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is there a place where people who are not tech savvy can get mm -hmm. somebody to kind of give them some hands-on on the um, command stuff and so on and so forth? Because right now, I don't even feel like I could get a transaction put together uh, on that plat. Well, I know I can't. I've, I've tried three different times, got mad, left, went to transaction desk, and did it there. So, um, so <laughs> and I've tried yeah. watching the videos, but there's only so much I can do with videos, you know? You mean those like hour and a half long videos of the dragon and clicking, it's not doing it for well, you? yeah, you know? I just, okay. I, just, I just need somebody smarter than me to show me how to do things one time, and then I'll have it, you know? But I just gotta, I gotta get to that point. Ryan, reach goodness. out to me, send me an email and I'll get you on my calendar and we can do that. Okay, cool. I was also Thank gonna you. say Tech Tech Tuesday after team meetings, uh, Dan Tarkel, you can get some time with Dan. Um, okay. A lot of people don't show up to that, which is crazy. Um, so all you have to do is show up to that and then you are good to go. I mean, he'll spend one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's an hour every week and then he'll walk you through absolutely everything that you need. Well, I only saw you, two of those earlier in the month for this month on the calendar. So I didn't know if that was just because mm. they weren't available. Yeah, I don't, we haven't been having, because we have Ignite. Um, 
we switch the times of ignite in February. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, it actually starts at noon. So then it's then that way we can incorporate that stuff and have team meeting be longer. Uh, but Dan Turkel, you have his info too. He's also great. You can reach out to him or me. And we'll either one of us will help you with that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. For sure. And then um, since we've actually only got, I found a way to get all of you guys on my screen, which is pretty dang cool. Um, I'm going to put everyone on the spot here because I see a lot of just blank windows. And so if there was, if it was in person, it'd be a lot easier. So if you can Like I think you froze out. I think he just tech Tuesday himself out of the meeting. I honestly thought it was my computer messing up, so I'm glad it wasn't. Ah, uh -huh, 27 rings. How you feel? Go Yankees. How you feeling, Cardinals fans? What's up? Oh my gosh, Blake, Blake. Okay, I think he's he just hopped out. Gotta love Zoom. Gotta love technology. You'd think they'd have it figured out by now. He's probably yeah. got kids taking all of his Wi-Fi on Zoom meetings. Well, his wife's a teacher, yeah. and I know that she's that's actually, home. So <laughs> that's one hundred percent what's happening. Yeah. There we go. You're back. I'm back. Here we are. Golly. I'm just waiting for the other the other side to connect as well. But if you can go ahead and unmute or not unmute yourself, but put put your video on. Um, I don't want to just talk and only see myself on the screen because that will be super distracting and it will not get anything done for anyone. Then let's see. I wonder why it's taking so long for this one to connect over here. Um, that'll just be good. And then I'm actually going to go around just to give you guys, kind of give you guys a heads up for what I'm looking for here. And I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to me because I need to know who I'm talking to and how long you guys have been in the business. So not that. So sorry. Here we go. There we go, sweet action. This is being recorded. Second time's a charm. Yeah, man, this is, uh, okay, yes, you can use I the just camera. Need, I yes. just need you house. Okay, and then see, let's see, mm -hmm. yeah. There we go, okay. Oh, can I keep adding this over here? Okay, so I just can't stand this from the gallery view. Boom, sweet, we've got everyone on here. Very good, sweet. Okay, so there are still a lot of people that have uh, their cameras turned off that will be fine. But Brian, if you'll introduce yourself, give me like a 30 minute blurb as to how long you've been in the business and sure. something you hope to get from this. Yeah, absolutely. Brian Jackson, um, been doing this since 1999, and I'm just kind of trying to get back to the basics. And and um, you know, I think I've gotten by a, a lot of years um, just just because I've got a pretty decent personality and people like me. <laughs> and um, so okay. I need to get a little more systematic about the way I'm doing things, and that's what this is all about. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go, Dayton. Just, uh, let's go, Dayton. Since Justin just walked away. Hey Blake, hey everybody, uh, Dayton Lovin. I just got my license in August, and but just considering uh, 2022 kind of my official launch in the real estate, and just excited to learn some new things. Give me something specific that you'd like to learn that's new today. Um, maybe what you felt has been the most successful um, ways to um, generate leads, or or, or what. Uh, how you focused on setting your goals and, and achieving them and, and what just advice you'd give for us in, in, in our first year 
since obviously your first year was very successful. Okay. Uh, Justin Johnson. Caught me off guard. All right, uh -huh. uh, Justin Johnson. I've been in this uh, since mid-November. My goals are um, to get through my entire sphere as fast as I can and then to master the open house. Okay, very good. Uh, Johnny Rowe, I don't think we met before. Hey Blake, yeah, I'm glad we're finally getting to meet today. It's just a shame it's it's on Zoom and not over drinks and talking about the Chiefs. Uh, what a great night that was last night. But uh, I've been in the business for about five years. Uh, the previous time that I've been in real estate, um, I have focused on personal investment, specifically flipping houses. And um, I have helped uh, anybody who's reached out to me. Uh, um, I've been their agent before, whether it's on the buyer, or the list side. Uh, my actually my goal for 2022 it's funny you mentioned you did 30 houses your first year this is the first year that i'm full um for lack of a better term balls of the wall going into being a buyer's agent and my goal was 20 before this and now that you've said 30 i want to make my goal 32 so uh, i guess uh, what i'm looking for out of this blake is um how you how you develop the structure to tackle every day and get to 30 uh, transactions in your first year Okay, we can talk to that for sure. Uh, Chase Spent. Yes, sir. Uh, haven't been in too long. Uh, just got my license uh, and work permit like last week. Uh, so just mainly coming in, trying to learn what I can do and, uh, and, and learn from obviously some really good teachers. So and Sure. I was like, what a nightmare question to ask somebody that just got their license. Like, I don't even know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually Sutton Shields. I'm also on here. Uh, yep. I've had mine for about six months, but haven't really done a whole lot. And so I want to learn to actually be able to start getting the ball rolling and get going. Actually use it to make money somehow. Yeah. I feel you. I've been there for that. Okay. You're up. I need to unmute myself. Um, my name's Kay and I've been in real estate for about eight months and I guess today I'm just looking forward to learn, you know, it's obviously setting goals that matter. I have a lot of little goals, but I think I need to learn how to prioritize a little bit better. So hopefully that is what I can learn today. <laughs> I got you. We can do that. Perfect. Nathan Blanton, what is up my dude? Hello, my name is Nathan Blanton. I got my license in November. I've had some frustrating experiences in real estate so far, but I am excited to say that I got my first house under contract yesterday. So Congrats, I'm excited. Yeah, thank you. Congrats. I'm excited to have a strong 2020. Um, would love to, uh, you know, set a uh, record like you did with the rookie of the year. I've never been great at goal setting. I've just kind of you know, worked hard and, and, uh, you know, seen where that took me. So I'm excited to learn more about actually setting a concrete goal and going after it. So. Heck yeah, dude. We can do that. And then moving, let's see through here. Uh, I got next up is Edward. How do you say your last name? Uh, hey Blake, it's Edward. If to me, uh, okay, it's Romanian. Good. And uh, congrats, Nathan. That's that's a big accomplishment to get your first con uh, contract on the go. So congrats. Um, I'm kind of new here. I've only been doing this. I've only got my license a couple of weeks ago. I'm kind of just a, a sponge, just trying to absorb everything and learn from the best. You're at the right brokerage for that. My humble opinion. Hey, can you guys hear me twice here? How can you guys hear me, actually? Yeah, Are you hearing hear, me through? I hear you like one time. You're good on my end. Okay. Can you guys hear me just fine, though? It's not echoing or anything like that. Sounds good. It's good. Okay. Excellent. Uh, David Caldwell. I'm David Caldwell. Uh, I sold real estate from 2003 to 2009. Let my license go back to 2010. I worked for Keller Williams 2009 to 2000. Oh, 2008, 2009. Uh, got back into the business, kind of missed it. Uh, really enjoyed doing it. One of those 
get the ball back rolling again and uh, build back a business. All right, uh, Dallas Finley. Hey, I'm Dallas. I uh, just passed my test a couple of weeks ago and been Congrats. trying to get through the application and all that, but it seems like every other day I wake up, I'm sick if you can't hear it right now. So uh, I'm just kind of here to absorb everything and just kind of get, honestly, I don't know what I'm trying to get out of this, but we'll see. That's kind of. Uh, <laughs> You're good. I was like, and everybody like, just. <clears throat> what was that? Just so. I was to say, just so everybody knows, if you've been in the business like two months and you don't have a good answer for this, you're like, I don't know. That's completely fine. It's like drinking from a fire hose, like especially if you don't even have the license yet, uh, or you're <laughs> filling out the application. That's a completely okay answer. Okay. Yeah, and sorry you feel sick, dude. That's uh, that's tough right now. Dude, my me and my girlfriend, we're just playing like roulette with getting sick. Like one week it's <laughs> her, then it's me, then it's her. So nice to meet you, Blake. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, Joshua Johnson. Hi, Blake. Josh Johnson. Uh, I have essentially been in the business since the beginning of this meeting, uh, passed my test last week, and uh, I'm uh, transitioning from being a lender, so um, that may be beneficial, but as far as uh, real estate, I'm pretty much a sponge, so. Very good. I think we just texted, actually. I think I texted you. Today. Last week, uh-huh. Okay, the lender thing brought that back. Uh, Michelle, Michelle, is that how you say that? Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's Michelle Vieira. Okay, hey, sorry, me. I'm not going to show myself because I'm sick as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm new to the business, just got my license in December and started officially in January. So again, I'm just looking to learn as much as I can from everyone that knows a lot more than I do. Love it. You're in a good spot. Thank you. And let's see what we're on the end. Do we have any other Michelles? Omar, Michelle, I think you're muted if you're talking. Can anybody, there we go. So you're still, ah, she's got you. Christina, thank you. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm just started. I'm only in the business for a couple of weeks. Okay. And to learn everything that I can right now. Love it. Tammy Gore. I forgot to unmute myself. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tammy Gore. I am the new admin for Kim Mooneyham. I come from about two years of commercial real estate experience as an admin, so. Dang, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. She'll keep you busy for sure. Yeah, uh, right. Christian, Christian, what you got, man? I don't even Christian, know the just... question. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what's something that you're looking to learn from today? Something I'm looking to learn from today. Yep. I don't know. I don't have an excuse either. I'm not brand new. I was like, bro, I'm making you say something, dude. This is not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm, I really maybe more, be a little bit more purposeful with my goals because I have them wrote down and they're ambitious, 80, 80 transactions in 2022. So they're ambitious and Jeez. they take a whole lot of work, but it, yeah, it's just being a little bit more purposeful with my goal. Okay. Purposeful. Love that. And let's see here, uh, Sutton Shields. Well, I know I heard that was who was just on with me. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. I was like, that and then also, uh, we've got one in here named Don that we're streaming to our office TV as well, so. Okay, right on, man. Uh, and I think that is pretty much everyone. If I missed anybody, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and then go. I was like, because I'm not sure if, the, if we play like, it was an old TV show. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if the, if the pictures move. I tried to go in order so I wouldn't miss anyone. Going once, going twice. All right, we're gonna move. We're gonna move through it. Um, and then the, I'm not gonna go through with everyone. That gives me a pretty good gist of how long everyone's been in the business. But when it comes to 
the sessions leading up to this, like, what did you guys, was there any big takeaways? Like did anybody before me in the first four sessions say anything that you're just like, dude, that was really good. I really like that. I have no idea how long to wait. Like when I'm in person, I can absolutely. The, I the know pressure's on you, I guess. Yeah, there's no problem. The pre no one learned anything. That's a great point, Christian. You tell me something that you learned in the first four sessions. No. Like I thought that uh, I thought that uh, on I guess that would have been Friday. Uh, Amy Malaya Coppets led the meeting. It was called "Your Database Is Your Business." Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can pinpoint one thing she said, but the entire thing was just scripted around. Um, like I asked her about how she's dealing with uh, investors, like people who are already in her database, since I have a little bit more experience and the way that she broke things down, like you need to classify people into A, B or, or, or C class buyers. Like if they're an investor in your, in your database and I, I, I it's, it would be tough for me to say exactly the whole thing, but I just think uh, I'm echoing the sentiment of everybody here that on Friday, we really learned how to, get into our database and then classify them into certain categories, whether that's through like tagging them on command or anything. Uh, that's really what, what I, I took away from Friday. I would like to add to yeah. that. I would like to add to what, what Johnny just said, because, uh, because um, uh, Amy said that your database is a 10 to one to a 14 to one return on your investment with your time and your money and your energy and nothing else nothing else in the market anywhere else is as good as your database and so it is like important to just focus on that i'd like to add that that was a huge takeaway because i always think like man i gotta get better at like facebook posting or instagram or whatever Don't, forget all that it's all right there in your phone already work on that it's it's on your computer if you've uploaded your database work on that that's what i got it's a good takeaway man that's really good Three, two, one. Okay, let's get into it then. And I'm actually going to use, in case you guys don't have it, I'm and you guys can see the the slides, correct? On one of the windows. Or do you guys have the slides, the Ignite slides? You guys have the my screen sharing right now. I am not seeing the slides. Please hold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm glad, I'm glad I asked. Uh, let's see here. It's so weird because I have the two cameras on, so I feel like I can move back between stuff. Okay, can you guys see the slides now? Yes. Okay, very, very cool. Can anybody not see the slides? Okay. Let me see if I can find a way to get all you guys back up here again. I don't think it's going to let me, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to go off the same slides. So we're going to talk about two things is the goal for right now. So the goal is I want, I want to teach you guys basically <clears throat> number one on grow your business. Cause there's two ways that you guys need to just learn to operate. Um, and everyone operates in a way already. So I am, I, I, I push really against the traditional get on the phone, make the phone calls. Um, you know, you make sure you put things in your database. All you need, you know, contact as a person, their name, email, and phone number. Like um, I put my entire business on coffee appointments and that on average cost me between three to $7. I have, I never, I've never paid for any leads because um, I was trying to find the, high, the highest ROI on my time. Um, for those investor savvy people in the room. And then I was also trying to find uh, the cheapest way to do it because I was poor. I had no money. I got into real estate. I actually used, I got hit by a logging truck when I was driving down the road and I got the insurance check and I actually used that check instead of fixing my car. I used that check to pay for my license, my licensing. So I had to find a way to be resourceful. Um, and then I basically unintentionally, I set a goal. You know, so the goal was, okay, in order for me to do this, I know that I need to get business like right now. And I know that I can't spend a lot of money, right? So those are the, the parameters of the goal. And then I just kind of went and luckily it worked out. But the thing that I did say that I was going to do 
was that I'm going to make sure that I exhaust my sphere before I move anywhere else. Okay, and this is this is I want to spend a second on this because it's been three years and I'm over 200 transactions in and um, it's not done yet. Okay, and I want to make sure that when I say that I work my sphere, what you're not hearing is, oh, the business just comes to them. Because there are certainly, and, and Brian, if you've got anything to add to this because you've been around for a while, I would love the insight. Um, business will absolutely come to you the longer that you've been in the business. It just does. People know what you do and they just, it comes to you and it's very easy. You can either lead generate by going to open houses, you know, phone calls, cold calls. Um, there's a thousand different ways that you can do it. Um, but Justin Johnson, what you're saying, it's, I think it's 14 to one. I think it's 55 to 55 to one if you're calling people you don't know. And I think it's 14 to one if it is. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, that's the one that I need to focus on. So that I did. So the question that I have for you, Brian, is, um, is there a difference between working your sphere and then just getting business from your sphere? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, you know, obviously, if, if, if you've got 500 people that, that, that you communicate eh, half-heartedly with, um, then, you know, that'll turn into some, some transactions for you every year. But if you're sending out, you know, monthly mailings to these people, they're getting your emails, you're, you know, of course, I, I do a ton of interaction on, on social media with my sphere. But, um, you know, I mean, all, all that, you know, again, it's just about top of mind. I mean, being being the first person they think of whenever they're ready for something real estate related. Love it. I also um, pride myself in kind of being a good resource for anything related to real estate. So, I mean, you know, if, if they need contractors, if they need whatever they need, basically, I try to be the person that, that they tend to think of. And, it, and it's worked pretty well for me. Pretty well. What is that? So you said 1999? Yeah. Bro, that's like, was that 22 years? That's a long time, man. Don't, don't be calling yeah. me old. Don't be calling me old. <laughs> yeah, there's no, no shade, no shade, but like, damn. Oh, that's awesome. Because um, uh, most people can't. I was born. No. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. hurts a little. But, <laughs> but we need you. We need people like you. So the, uh, we need people like you. We, <laughs> you know, dusty ones. <laughs> the, the, the dusty guys. But basically, um, you can lead generate so many different ways. And there's not a right way to do Well, there's a right way to lead generate. And then there's a wrong, like, then. Well, there's only one way to lead generate, and that is going out and talking to people. How you're talking to people doesn't matter. Just pick one that you can do consistently. So um, if you've got a piece of paper, put lead generate, and you can put a question mark next to it, because this is the thing that I want you to commit to by the end of today. Um, you're just going to pick it, and you're going to go with it. Mine was coffee appointments. Some people do open houses, like Justin wants to master open houses. Um, you can do cold calls. You can do just walking into businesses. You can do uh, networking groups. Like there's a thousand different ways for you to do it. But this is what I will say. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying is actually my very first year. I, well, like I said, I got hit by the logging truck. So I had that check. I wasn't going back. So I was a terrible employee, right? I was the most ambitious person that I knew. Um, when it came to starting something or getting things going and I climbed the ladder really fast, but for whatever reason, I'd always get bored and want to find the next thing. So I finally just said, you know what, I'm going to try to do real estate. Um, I'm actually, uh, my wife and I got into it for investing. So, uh, last year we bought seven duplexes. And so we have like, that's really why I sell real estate. Um, and I want to make sure that this is, this is important. Do we have any Simon Sinek fans in the room? Okay, so there is a video and just go on and watch it on your own time. It's five minutes long. It's called The Golden Circle. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, you draw three circles and what, you know the circles are inside and they get bigger. So one big circle, a smaller circle inside that one and a smaller inside that one. And it starts what, why, how, right? And so basically, he talks about how when, in sales, we always do it one way. Like we start with the what, like, hey, this is what we do. We sell computers. How do we sell them? We make the best stuff. And then you get to why. And then, okay. <clears throat> Just get, figuring out why is insanely hard. Figuring out why is insanely hard. And one of the things that happened when that went viral is everyone just started focusing on why. 
And so there's a lot of classes and I think there might be one actually in Ignite that is pretty much, we've, we've got to help you figure out your why. You got to find the, because motivation is a fickle thing. Um, we are all in mean, neuroscience. If you haven't jumped into some neuroscience stuff, you got to jump into that because motivation is literally a chemical mixture in your head. And then when it's gone, it's gone. That's not something you can will to come back. So you have to find something to connect it to that is so powerful that it makes you want to drive and keep going. Um, the pain of not hitting that goal has to be greater than whatever obstacle you're running into now. For instance, every time that I didn't want to go on a coffee appointment, the actual thing that I would say to me, myself, and this, this is really intense, so I apologize that I'm coming and letting you guys know, but like, if I don't go on this coffee appointment, that means that I'm not going to be able to afford the, uh, re the next real estate deal that comes across my desk. And if I can't do that, that means my wife can't leave her job. And if I can't provide that for her, I feel like I've failed. Straight up, period. There was nothing more to it. The pain of me failing my wife so that she could do whatever she wanted because I had that luxury was much greater than taking somebody to coffee, right? And so <clears throat> we will find a way to attach to that. And so when it comes to the why in the circle, we are gonna talk a lot about why, especially in Keller Williams, why, 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 why it's so important. And it is, but they're all equally important. Why you do what you do is important, how you do it is important and what you do is important, okay? Because if you can tell somebody, this is why I do it, and it's the most compelling thing in the world, but you're a terrible agent, and you don't even know what you're doing, uh, you will lose business. You won't be able to function with it. You have to be able to do all three of them, whatever you decide for them to be, at a very, very high level. And everyone in here can. Um, I don't know if Nicole's there. I don't want to call her out in case she's not. But I believe that we're the number eight KW in the world when it comes to productivity. In the world. So like when it comes to having the people around you in the systems and, you know, how do I lead generator? What do I do? You're, you're literally in one of the best places you could be. There might be seven other places in the world <laughs> that you could go and get stuff from like this. Now, before I move on from that, did I say anything that I didn't put a period on? Very good. So then we're going to talk about how to grow your business. Thank you, Justin. Seriously, everybody take some time and get, get familiar with Simon Sinek. Everybody knows who Tony Robbins is. Uh, Tony Robbins is the most ballsy dude. I can't stand that guy. He talks about how you sell, uh, how emotions sell stuff. And he's absolutely right. And then he's literally selling a course. No, it's crazy. It blows my mind. We're going to talk about how to grow your business by lead generating for buyers and sellers. What this does is get you paid. How you do it matters and we'll touch on that and then we're going to talk about running your business and i believe we're going to talk about setting goals and then attending training and getting coaching um another important thing to remember as we go through this for me is i'm i'm just not just now end of my third year so I'm, I'm just now starting my fourth year and when it comes to attending training and getting coaching this is something that i was doing unintentionally so the very first year i took it was coffee appointments. I took 72 other real estate agents out to coffee because I couldn't fail. Because for me failing, if I couldn't get a coffee appointment, or if I couldn't keep growing, I couldn't afford the real estate investing because that was the goal. The goal for me was real estate investing. Now I had to find something to give me a high enough return on my time to allow me to buy real estate. And I was taking that real estate and I was trying to give freedom to my wife and I to do whatever we wanted to do. So that was the pain that kept pushing me. And so I, I didn't intentionally attend training and get coaching. But whenever I showed up to the coffee appointments, <clears throat> the one question that I asked the agent, I would sit down and I would say, okay, hey, how, are you, how, have, you, how have you been in the business so long? Like, what, what, what's the one thing that I can do that if I can just stay on track, what, what can I do? And to save a long story short, or to make a long story short, the, I noticed two things. They, they all had two things in common. One, they were all working their sphere. <clears throat> I don't know a single agent that has been in the business longer than three or four years and Brian Jackson uh, either confirm or deny for me because this is, I love having you in here. The, um, 
none of them are going to open houses. And if they do, it's not something they're doing consistently. Very few of them, unless they run a team, are actually running ads. The majority of the people that I took out, it was repeat business, referral business, or their sphere. And then, is that would you agree with that, Brian? Yeah, I think I'm like 84% falls into that category of business I did this last year. So, um, yeah. Love it. So I decided to build my business based on that. So I set a goal, right? I want to sell 30 deals my first year. Um, I didn't know that it had the highest return. All I knew is that it was something that all of them did. And the second thing that they all did is they did something consistently. Um, and it didn't matter. I mean, it was crazy. It was, it was all over the place. One person did, um, I'd ask for the assume, man. Um, no, this has been all over the place. Open houses. One person had a, a group where they created a, a mailing list that worked. I've heard of people that create a shopping group that works like, yeah, once again, how you lead generate. And I don't remember, have you guys already had an entire section on how to lead generate? Dayton and Johnny, I can see you guys on the bottom here. So I'm sorry if I'm picking on you guys. Um, have you guys had uh, like a, an Ignite session based on just lead generation period? We've, we've talked about, you know, your database is your business and about, you know, calling your sphere, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Right on. Um, yeah. So then we're going to talk about lead generating for buyers and sellers, setting goals and attending trainings and getting coaching. Um, you guys have to know how you want to lead generate so that you can set goals and attend the training and getting coaching. And everything that I just said, summarizing up in one thing is, I want to make sure that I actually say it in one sentence so I don't just keep, keep talking on this thing. If, if you work your sphere and you actually work it, um, it's going to take you way longer to get through it than you think, because working it is not just calling it once. <clears throat> you will find the things that you need to be trained on and coached on. And then that's going to be lead generation from a standpoint that actually keeps people in the business. And that's what people want by the end of it. Okay. Um, mm, one more thing. I, I have no... Uh, preference on brokerages. Uh, obviously, I think this is the one that makes the most financial sense. And there's an, a lot of incredible people here. And I love being here. Okay. But I started at Murney, and then I went to Century 21. And then I ended up here. So I've been at, I've been to three different places. Um, I say that because this building is insanely good. But there's a lot of agents within our board that is they're They're incredible as well. So get involved with the board and then get involved here at KW, meet as many agents as you can um, and be intentional about doing that because that has, that has more impact than I can even put into words. I wish I would have known what I was doing then when I'd met 72 agents that first year because the impact was profound and I had no idea. I just, I didn't want to fail was my biggest thing. Oh, looky there. We're going to lead generate for buyers and sellers. And then we're going to set goals and attend training and kid coaching. And Nicole, you should be insanely happy that I knew that was coming. That means I looked over the slides at least if you're there. So these are going to be <clears throat> what we're going through. So we're going to talk about how to envision a big life, understand your goal, then you're going to do the right activities. And then I'm going to ask for ahas. And then we're going to build daily successful habits. Mm, buzzwordy. But uh, envision the big life. Who we are and where we want to go determine what we do and what we accomplish. Does anyone have anything they want to add to that or say with that? Yeah, if you haven't read that book, you better. It, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a great book. It is a really, really good book. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to I'm going to frame things in a very negative sense today, um, because I want you guys to feel pretty much what I'm saying. Who we are and where we want to go determine what we do and what we accomplish. So if you're not happy with where you are currently, you don't like who you are uh, and you don't know where it, you don't know where you want to go and it means you're accomplishing something. But it's just not the thing that you want. Let me say that in a different way. Uh, you're winning right now at the things that you're doing. 
because as humans, like we are wired to win. So if you want to sell 30 deals or 50 deals or 80 deals and you're not doing that, it's, uh, you know, are you sitting on the couch or watching too much TV? Because if that's the thing that you're doing, and that's the thing that you're winning at. Does that make sense? Like I want yeah. to look at the actions of what's being done. And then if it doesn't, if the actions are the things that you're doing don't correlate to your goal, you will fail every time. It will never, it will never happen the way that you want it to. That doesn't mean it's the only thing that you do. I think that makes sense. And I think they're going to touch on that a little more. So I'm not going to go on a huge tangent on that right now, but we'll stay here. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Uh, yes, I have one. Two. You, you said you got like two advices from all of the appointments that you had. You only went through one, which was work your sphere. Love it, dude. Thank you for saying that. So uh, real talk really fast. I legit have ADHD, like legit, not like I get distracted. So please, 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 please. When I do that, cause I will do it multiple times, do exactly what you just did. And the first one that I said um, on the points was I took 72 agents out of coffee and it was working their sphere. Correct. Is that what I said? Yes. That's what you said. Okay. Uh, secondly, the second thing that they did is they did something consistently. Okay. So um, whether it was open houses, whether it was lead generation, whether it was sending um, postcards, whether it was taking people to coffee, whatever the thing that they decided to do, they did it consistently for a very long time. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions up to this point? Going once, going twice. Moving on. Okay, think, act, and achieve. I spent a lot of time looking at this one because I didn't understand what it was asking. Uh, and I have an instructor's manual, but I kind of looked at it and then I kind of, it was telling me exactly what to say. I'm like, I'm the guy that you're like, hey, say this thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to say the opposite. So I was trying to figure out exactly what this looked for because what this looks, what is, how would you guys interpret this? Like somebody that has a thought. Someone give me something on this. So I don't know if this is right or not, but just looking at it to me, it just kind of makes the difference of what you're shooting for. If you, if you put a high enough goal out there that, and you consistently shoot for it, then you can't help but be more successful than you would if you had small goals that you were shooting for every day. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just really confusing. Because um, right now, the thing that they want us to be talking about is envisioning a big life. <clears throat> and I want to change the, the, the sentence a little bit. Like, like imagine a life that actually has meaning, like do something that actually has a meaning to you. Like I know several people that the thing that they want to do is they want to make six figures. That's the thing. And if you can tie it to something bigger than that, absolutely. Cause you have to, why do you want six figures? And you can go deeper into that, but right up on the front, find something that makes sense. Find something that you have to do. And we'll figure out why it's important. And then we can set the goal to that. Okay. So I'm going, and I'm, I'm interpreting this graph in a different, very different way. So the, the red line, the way that I look at it is, you know, basically you're thinking bigger and then your actions lead you to the big thing. It's, but it's the same thing. Okay. But I like looking at time and effort and then the thinking. So the left side's thinking the, the bottom there is time and effort. Um, it's saying, you know, big outcomes require more time and effort, more thinking. I don't agree with that. I think it needs, it needs to be lined up and it needs to be congruent. Okay. Like I think everything that you do has to lead to that outcome because if KW has taught me anything, it's that you can have success through other people and leverage and having people around you and these small outcomes with the actions that are kind of linked to it. You're going to spend way more time because it's not consistent. You're going to spend a lot of time pivoting and changing and not knowing what to do because you're ping-ponging around so much. But I think that that just died. Can you guys still hear me? Thank you. Um, anybody have anything they want to add on with this? And this is all from the one thing, the book that Christian said you should read. 
So, and I don't know if this is in there later. My goal is to drink three of these before this thing is done. Okay, and I've only had two, but I literally brought two unopened bottles, a three total down here. If I don't drink these two, like I want you guys to check in on me through this. Okay, so this is an example of, I think, what, what this is talking about. I know over the course of quarter one, I want to be drinking more water just because I need to. The amount of coffee that I drink, the amount of alcohol that I drink, I need to make sure that I'm putting water in my body. It just needs to happen. So I was like, all right, I'll just drink a gallon a day. I'm going to drink a gallon a day. I started that quarter four of last year, right? I'm thinking really big. That's the outcome that I want. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get that goal. Uh, turns out it's really hard to drink a gallon of water a day because that's a lot of, that's a lot of water. A, and then you're not nearly as hungry because you drank so much water and you go to the bathroom all the time. And then they don't talk about, well, how do you actually get the water, right? Because you have to carry either a, a big jug around or you have to carry uh, a two, mm -hmm. like literally a two gallon thing. Like, okay, so I'm supposed to drink. Okay. And so a ton of problems presented itself. A ton of problems. Because I don't want to be the guy that shows up to a coffee appointment. I'm like, yeah, here's my water. And let's talk about me drinking water. Because that's a goal that other people don't need to hear about, right? The goal that I want you to hear about, the thing that I want you to support is not my, my drink. I want you guys here right now to keep me accountable. I don't care if you support me drinking water or not, right? Now, I want you to hold me accountable to drinking this water. But this is a me goal. And so whenever it comes to my real estate business, I didn't want to sit down and sit down and have coffee with somebody and then spend 30 minutes talking about water and how everyone wants to drink more water because we're terrible at drinking water. Did that make any sense at all? Casey gave me like, mm, kind of not really, but like we appreciate the thought and the time. Um, hey, I, I have a question for you, Blake. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I kind of was saving this one for like when, when we get to meet. Um, who are the five people that you surround yourself with that, that mm. actually make you? Okay, that's the thing we talk about all the time in the meeting. You are the sum total of the five people who most influence you, the, the closest people, five closest people to you. Who are those people? Did that go through? Did I lose Blake? Did we lose Blake? Yeah, I'm not seeing Blake anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we lost Blake. Yeah. He went to go I hang out with his wife. I can imagine that because his wife is, is uh, teaching with Zoom and might have kids that are on separate Zooms when you've got three or four kids, and I had dealt with this before, uh, you can just crash. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> All right, Blake, there he is. My, I had a question. I had a question. Uh, who have the summary of the five people that I'm around? I got there and then my phone started ringing and then Zoom crashed. That's so it. Everything exploded. Yeah, you got it. I, I, I like to ask that in every single, like, you know, whether it be like an insurance agent or uh, uh, anybody, another real estate agent or, uh, you know, loan officer, whoever. I like to ask that question now. Who are the five people that influence you? Top five. Um, by asking that question, what's the goal of that question? Because I want to know how in the world did you become you and how do you think like you are and who, who is around you and what about them makes them uh, influence you? Who's your five? So my, my five is, that's such an interesting question because this is kind of how I, <clears throat> this is how I view this and why I kind of want to flip the script and talk about uh, the five people that you need to go find because I actually have five people that I associate with each spot of my life that I want. So like I have five people that I aspire to personally because they're very good. Um, they're very good dads or they're very good husbands or they're very good friends. Um, and then I have five investors that I follow around because they're very good at investing and they all do five different things. I have five people in the office that I make sure that I spend time with Nicole being one of them, Rachel, Dan, Adam, like, there's so many people in that building. Um, so I, I don't think that it's five because um, I couldn't I couldn't narrow it down. I found myself surrounded by a lot of people that are really good at what they do. Um, so I, I found five main areas and those areas have changed based on what I'm trying to do. 
Um, so I love this question, but it's a it's a hard question to answer. But let's <clears throat> let's spend a second. And so you're asking because you want to know how I became me, right? And then like that's that's basically the gist so that you can turn around and hopefully do the same thing. Like not be me because you don't want to be me, I promise. Um, <laughs> but like basically a better version of yourself, right? I think it was Justin, yeah, was yeah, that you yeah. who asked I mean, the question? Listen, these same questions would be uh, to somebody who was a, not, not a, um, uh, um, a, a great success, but somebody mm -hmm. who was a great failure, I would ask them the same question how to not be that person it's just yeah. a learning tool uh well, learning for what self-growth okay so the goal is to grow personal is personal growth then sure so okay. justin i'm i'm curious then so is the question who are my five people or or who are the five people you should be looking i mean i that's because i'm a little lost too you so it's it's who who are the who are your top five people the sphere of five people around you that most influence you that make you become because you are the sum total of the five people who you are around. Well, right, okay, so I get that. So like in my case, my five people. I'm I, by the way, I head a networking organization as well, um, and so business networking is 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 probably our our secret sauce to a lot of our success, frankly. But I've been doing that for nine years. Um, but um, so, you know, in my case, I mean, I've got a mortgage lender that I'm extremely close with. He gets a lot of business. We go to lunch a lot. We spend a lot of time together. I've got an insurance agent that's the same way. Great referral partner. I've got um, a, a wealth management guy um, that um, same same sort of thing. Um, and then and then honestly, my other two, um, one's a contractor. Um, well, he's HVAC. He owns an HVAC company um, and uh, plumbing. Um, and then I don't know who my fifth one would be. It's really just those four. Well, I guess uh, Vince Tantone. Uh, he's a home inspector, and and he's definitely in my top five or six people that I, that I network with constantly. So, is that helpful, though? Yeah. So well, this is this is my that. favorite bit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So why are you asking the question? And this this is the this is where goals are so important, right? Um. You need to have like super clarity. So like this, if, if this is, if there was one thing that I would attribute the, all the success to it's, I want to know. And it's, and I couldn't, I couldn't have told you this three years ago. Okay. I couldn't have told you, I, I figured this out last year in the PC program, helping people through stuff. Um, unless you are super clear on what you want to do, you can set all the goals in the world. It doesn't matter. Because in, in three months, you could get a change of heart and now you want to do something different. Well, now you're not doing that one thing that the 72 agents that I talked to, well, now you're, do, you're not doing anything consistently. And then let's say that you want to do, okay, well, I want to be, I want to sell 30 deals. Excellent. Perfect. And then you have changes, but I still want to, the goal is still to sell 30 deals, but now I don't want to, I don't want to go to BNI groups or I don't want to do whatever the thing is consistently. Well, now your actions, and this is going back to the slide here, your actions don't line up with your, the outcome that you want. And this is kind of what I was trying to get at earlier with, it's, it's literally impossible to know, or it's impossible to win at the thing that you want if you're doing actions that don't move you towards that thing. So bringing it back to the question that you're asking, why are you asking the question? So that it's a good question. This is something that I like, I like hyper-focus on. Are you asking that question because you want to know the people that you should put around yourself? Are you at, like, what's, what do you, what, what answer are you hoping to find by asking that question? Yeah, in a way it's, it's, it's to find out who, who should I put myself around and who shouldn't I put myself around? How do I maximize my time and how do I avoid uh, uh, just wasting time and, and energy and money? And like, who, who is teaching you those things? So, and we're using things and time and it's kind of vague and that's completely okay. But what do you, what do you want? What's the, what the, what's the thing that you want to do? I, I want to work efficiently. Okay. So I would find five people that work very efficiently and then I would just follow them. Okay. It's that, it's that easy. Like it's, it's that easy. 
Um, I can I can think on it. I'll text you five names. If you're actually looking for five people that work hyper efficiently, I can help you find that. But if if my goal is state empire, um, and you don't you have any interest in building a real estate empire, my aren't going to do you any good. Right. So this is the when I go when I say the clarity piece, I want to make yeah. sure that when you ask that question, we're giving you the right people. Does it make sense? Yes. Uh, is somebody else talking intentionally? Okay, very good. No, I'm in an uh, office. I'm in an office. I can, right. I can go outside here. No, no, you know, you're good. You don't need to do that. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to add on the five thing? Joshua Johnson, you said you've been a uh, lender for a while. Um, and did what I say make sense? It did. Um, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, I think the five, the five people on whatever you're trying to find, uh, I didn't know if those are specific people that you're working with. I mean, I think, you know, there can be inspirational people, uh, you know, like Tony Roma, um, Tony Robbins or um, Bruce Lee, for instance, um, you know, who you're, you're not going to have any dialogue with, but those could be people who are inspirational and have books that can send you down that right path. So, you know, Anyway, that was sort of my thought about it was, are they actual people in your life or are they people that influence you that aren't directly in your life? Yeah, that makes sense. Anybody want to add on to that? <clears throat> okay. And so I just, I want to make it clear just so I can make sure there's a period on it. So Justin, what's the goal? What's the, what's the goal that you want for the year? Do you have a goal yet? <clears throat> uh, like, yeah, I've set up a 411 and a one ten day GPS. Yeah. That's hilarious. Okay. Well, we're going to do that. So we'll get to, we'll get that done. What do you want to do for the rest of the year? Uh, I want, I want to make uh, six figures, right? So I, okay. I want to cross a hundred thousand um, dollars. And I like, so that's, that's the big, that's the big business goal. And then the big personal goal is to lose like 30 pounds. Okay. So which one of those goals is more important to you of the two of them? I, I <laughs> There's no right or wrong. It's to you. Okay. So I would, I would find three people that made over a hundred thousand dollars last year that you can stand. That I can stand. That Yeah. Personally. You'll find some people that you yeah, don't spend time around people you just don't like. Don't waste your time with it. In, in, in the KW office, you will find plenty of people that made six figures that you that you will get along with and that you like spending time with. Find three of those people and spend time with those three people. And then find two other people that are really into fitness and that you can stand, right? And that you like them and then follow them. All right. And then there's your five. but we can't find the five without the goal. And the goal has to be so clear that it's clear enough that we can easily find the five. You don't like that five question, do you? No, I love it. It's actually super. So what I would love to go through is go through and figure out exactly what everybody wants. It's just um, where my head's at now is that there's a lot of people that are super, super new. And the goal in the very beginning is how do I get enough money to make sure that I can stay in it? Right. And that's more of a survival goal. And then what I'm supposed to do is make you think big enough, right? And the thinking big enough is supposed to motivate you to uh, sell six figures. And then you can build this big world of abundance, which is of course what you, everyone should do. Um, I've just found over the past three years for me personally, and through the coaching program, it's way more effective when we talk about the pain piece. Um, you know, so getting the, the clear, I, so I love the question and we'll keep going because I don't want to spend a ton of time harping on this. Um, does anybody have a goal? Actually, I'll do this at the end. Someone hold me accountable to this. I want to spend time at the end of this. And if you have a goal, but you don't know how to get there, give me five to 10 minutes and I can help you get there. I can help you figure out a way to get there. Or if there's a goal or something that you want to achieve, I will help you build a plan to get there. I believe that is why they asked me to teach this class. Um, cause I'm by far, uh, when it comes to slides and stuff, not my favorite thing. Um, 
but helping people get what they want. If you can tell me what you want, I will help you find a way to get there. Hey, Blake. But you have to, yeah. Just, just real quick, I was going to, I've, I've got to run. I, these are recorded, right? Is this something that I can come back and watch this later? Yep, sure is. Oh, okay, okay. I've got to go pick a guy up and go show a property. So hey, dude. thanks, guys. Do it. Have a great day. See you, dude. Okay. So my big life, do you guys have uh, this in the printout? Because I've actually done this. And so, well, does anybody actually have this? Did anybody print out all the pieces that they needed here? I do not have this. Okay. So I was going to do this in person. Um, and it, whether it's I didn't do it correctly or whatever the thing was, this is not something that I got a ton from whenever I did it. Basically, you need to go around, you need to draw a circle in the middle of the page. And then we need to draw, you know, I don't know, two, four or five squares outside of that. And then you have to pick five things that you want to do. And of those five things, we have to put a monetary value of it. And then we got to move it all to the middle. And then of the middle, that's how much money you need to make to support the big life that you want. Um, and unless somebody really wants to go through this, I'm going to skip this piece. Um, because a lot of the people in this class, uh, their big life is like, dude, I'd like to not eat ramen and afford gas. And I would just like to sell real estate. And until you know that the business is going to work and that you're actually going to make enough money to sustain a life, livable life, uh, I think this is fun, but I don't think it matters. Does anybody want to spend time on this? Now's the chance because I will move past this so fast. Moving on. Okay, understand your goal. Where does it go? Uh, they're, they're talking with this instance, specifically the money. And so I do want to spend time on this because I think this is great. When you get paid, um, that is not how much money it is or that's not how much money you make. So if you make $6,000 in a commission check, obviously, you know, there's splits, you know, that there's expenses. Um, you want to make sure that we're building the goal out, right? Because more than likely, it's going to be a financial goal with the actual money that you have. Because if you build a plan based around numbers that don't work, uh, you're setting yourself up for failure. Okay. So where did you go? The other agent market center business expenses and your take home. Don't forget about taxes. Please don't forget about taxes. This is something we stressed on super hard with the PC program last year. Um, take 25% out. No, I'm not an accountant. My accountant told me 25%, put 25%. If you don't know, um, if you don't know anything about business, get in touch with Brian Stone. If he doesn't answer, call me. I will spend 15 to 30 minutes. This is all it will take to sit down and get everything set up for you because you have to know how to manage your finances. If you can't fund the goal that you want, it doesn't matter what the goal is. Does it make sense? Um, it's so weird because I haven't seen most of you. Um, I am the least numbers driven person you will meet. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I couldn't care less about the money. I couldn't care less about the numbers. I don't care about it. The thing that I do care about is that you have to understand it so that you can actually achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. So where does it go? It splits right down the middle. Let's say it's a 50-50 split with the market center. I think it's 60-40 or 80-20, depending on whatever it is. And then it just keeps going away. Okay. The far right side of the, the, the left line is how much money you're giving away. The far left is how much you're keeping. Um, we're actually going to break down the numbers, but 300, our average sales price is not 300. Can anybody tell me what our average sales price is for the area? It's going to be somebody out there who knows. 200,000. Confidently. I think that's right too. So let's do this together now. Somebody take 200,000 and give me 3% of 200,000. $6,000. $6, Love it. So we just made, we just sold the house. We got 6% or we got 3% because we brought the buyer. Uh, so we made $6,000. That is incredible. So, and we're assuming that you're a solo agent. Okay. So there, if you, if you join a team, you lose more money. 
I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, you need to treat this as a business. Guys, if you're giving someone money for anything, make sure that you believe you're getting enough value for the thing you're paying for. Because you're paying them money. If you don't think that KW is serving you well enough for the money that you're paying them, go and talk to them. Because there's a chance that you're using it incorrectly. Uh, there's a chance that they didn't understand what you needed. And there's a chance that it's just not a good fit. I know this is being recorded, so I might have just got shot or shunned from ever doing this again. <laughs> I think what you'll find is this is the best place to be. But guys, if you, you have to treat this like a business. That's why the numbers matter. Okay, so what is, your, what is your split as a solo agent with Keller Williams? I know the answer, but I'm not going to say. I'm going to make somebody else talk. Guys, I've got three bottles of water that I can drink. Like, I've got plenty of time here. Hmm. I've not been told the answer, so I have no idea. Okay. That works for you. You're off the hook. Or a 70 30. Correct. I think it's 70 so it's, 40. So it's 70 30. And then you have to pay 6% to KWRI, which is 6%. So we're going to run this off as 64%. Okay. 6436. Okay. So somebody tell me 64% of 6,000. 3840. Dayton, the guy, 38, 40. So that would mean 36% is, I'm not going to do that math in my head. Could just do the 2160. Thank you, sir. All right. So that is your split with KW. So that's six grand. If you build the goal off of six grand, you're going to be grossly, uh, you're not going to have the funds. You, know, you can't fund whatever it is you want to do. You can't fund your rent. You can't fund your food. You can't fund whatever it is, the thing that you want to do. If you're like, yeah, I need to sell one house a month and I'm good. Well, I need to, if you need six grand a month, you need two houses a month at least. Right. So let's assume business expenses. Let's see. Let me make sure that they're not. Oh, oh look, you know, guys, they told us what it was. What was that number again? This one here, which number? Uh, the split from six grand, six four percent. Uh, yeah, sixty four percent is three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, when it comes to being a business owner, and this is something that I harped on in the coaching program quite a bit, make sure you're getting a value for the money that you're spending. So every time you close a deal until you cap, you're paying the market center. $2,160. And I can assure you the value is here. But make sure you're tracking the numbers because at the end of the year, if, if everyone here, this is fine because it's a cap model, meaning at some point you pay no more money into Keller Williams. Um, but you're always paying X amount of dollars. You have to be able to make a good sound business decision. I'm going to go back and watch this and be like, dude, I talked about numbers so much. What was I doing? So we actually already went through this here. I'm gonna skip past this. And this is where Justin, especially, uh, cause it's, it, this is pretty dang easy. We're talking about six figures, right? Just cause it's, you said it was a goal of yours. This is for you and how much money you make. And I believe there's actual percentages here. Um, and there is in the MREA. If you guys haven't read the MREA, it's a millionaire real estate agent and you guys should. But uh, as a solo agent in Springfield, Missouri, you can be hyper profitable. You make like Springfield's cost of living is still super low, even though everyone's the sky is falling because it's raising, right? Um, you don't, I mean, you, you your first year making $100,000, you can be insanely profitable. Like I, I want to say in expenses one year, for the, for the entire year, I was at like 15 grand and that's coffee. That's marketing. That's ads. That's absolutely everything. That, that's not including the KW split. Okay. So when we're, when we're subtracting the business expenses, I don't want to subtract 50 grand because if you're spending $50,000 on your business and you're only making a hundred thousand uh, dollars, come get coffee with me. 
because we there's some things that we need to figure out. We need to <laughs> we need to line some different things up. So or you have a great tax guy. Actually, yeah, I wish. No, I'm just kidding. I hope he sees this. He's he's really really good. This is the first year that it's actually benefited us. Um, and guys, okay, it's important for me that you understand that real real estate investing is the coolest thing in the world. As a like, as a real estate professional, the investments that you make, the cash flow that you have, and all the write offs that happen on a on a on something that you've purchased, so a rental property, right? It goes directly against your income because you're a real estate professional. Most other places that that doesn't happen. So we bought those duplexes this year, and um, this is a sidebar. And it's okay though. Uh, I had to pay a lot of money in taxes because I had a really good year. I think my my taxable percentage right now is ten point five because we bought so much real estate. And that carries on and it's exponential and it's great. So if you have any, if you want to talk about real estate investing, dude, freaking call me. You can get my number from somebody in the office because you should be doing that. You should at least be looking into it. Please, for the love of God. Okay. Your average GCI, total GCI. Does anybody have any questions about how this formula over here on the right works? Okay, simple enough. So let's take 25% of 3840. Somebody hit me with that. Hey, Blake, what slide set are you on? I've been looking for it. What, what, what's that? What, what slide set? Uh, anybody, is it, am I not sharing this with you guys? Oh, I didn't share it when I came back in. Can you guys see the slides? Yep. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, I'm on slide, let's see, transaction goals is what it says. Man. On mine, it's hard to see the numbers because all of the, the people are over on top of the numbers. Uh, okay, I got you. Um, let's do, let's see, do like, this. Uh, on D, I can see 18, and I'm just, but I'm sure it's like 18,000. <laughs> I got you. 50 is 50,000, so kind of get the idea. So but It's the gist of it. So, uh, Justin, can I use you as a guinea pig, man? Are you cool with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. I can't actually see your face, so I'm just going to assume that you were good with that. Which yeah, is, yeah, that's good. Okay, I just wrote it to, I rotated you through, so now I can see. All right, Edward and Justin, you guys are now in the hot seat because now I can see you now. Okay. All right. All right, dude. So you want to make 100 grand, right? Sure. Sure? Yes. Yes. I want to make $100,000 this year. Okay. Yes, I, I like, do. Let's, let's do it. Yes, there we go. I do. So we, Give me 25% of 3,840. Man, I don't have a calculator on me, but. Dayton, can you help him out? 25%? That's like yep. $1,000. Just under $1,000. Bro, there's no, there's no like it. So like that, that, the goals have to be hyper clear. And this is a lesson that it took me forever to learn. Because I love doing what you're doing right now. It's like, now, nah, like that's the thing that I want. And I'll get there and it's going to be fine. It's going to be good. I wish it worked that way. Because I What's would be number 38? a billionaire. 3840. 960. 960. Okay, so that means. Twenty eight eighty is how much money, not including your expenses. And I'm not going to include your expenses because I don't know how much money you're going to spend to build your business. You should give yourself a set amount per month to spend as a business expense so that you can track it, okay? So if you're gonna make $2,880, how many transactions do you need? How many deals do you need, right? To actually make $100,000? Depends on how many, what the cost of those sales are. Well, so then that's the, that's the thing that's going to be weird about real estate is it is such a interesting cycle because it does cycle through uh, based on 20, 2880. So if our average price point is 200,000, the average commission off the average split off the average of whatever it is, because this is the deal. If your price point's higher, it takes less. Uh, if you're only working with investors and investors love calling new real estate agents and saying, hey, you can represent me if we could go ahead and get this thing. That's great, but it's a $50,000 house. So your price point will be super low. 
So you'll need way more than that. So this is based on the average of 200,000. Because I thought you meant uh, that, but uh, I was sort of digging. No, I, I, I'm glad you did. Like, I, I, w- I want everyone to dig as much as I can. About 35 houses. 35 houses. So now let's do the math here. So 35 times 2880 equals $108,000. And that's correct. But we're going to add in the splits that you need, right? Because the, the thing that we didn't include there was KW. Actually, we did. No, the way that we did it, we totally did. So we would be adding it back in. So 35 deals minus expenses. So let's put $1,000 a month. You're just spending $1,000 a month on your business. Uh, so that's an extra 12 grand, right? So let's do 12. Mm-hmm. So we trying to make a net hundred thousand or gross hundred thousand, like before tax. So I, I would like him to actually make a hundred grand because that's after the other taxes. thing. And yes, after this is all after taxes. So you'd actually need uh, four. So it was at 34 deals. Is that what you guys said? So if we took the hundred thousand and we divided it by $2,880, which is the average commission. And then we, we were taking 25% of that. So we're already taking out for taxes. I'm going to slow down really fast. Okay. 2880 is how much money you're making after KW takes their piece. Somebody tell me 2880 minus 960. The, the 2980 was after, yeah, the 2880 was after the taking out taxes though, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, good. So however much money you want to make, you're going to divide that by 2880. And that's your actual take home. Okay, so that's the money that you're actually bringing in. And so I believe that was 34. Was that right? If you wanted to make 100 grand? 34.7. So 34 points. Yeah, it's like there's no such thing as 0.7 of a house. So we're going to round up to 35, yeah. right? And then if we're, we're going to go ahead and jump. That's, that's and, one of those investor properties. Yeah, <laughs> two thirds of a triplex. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Um, and then we're adding $12,000 for $1,000 a month in expenses. That's another 4.16 houses. So let's add five houses to that. So that brings a total of what is that, 40 units? So you need 40 units for the year to clear and make a hundred grand. Okay. It's very doable. Now somebody take 40 divided by 12. Three point three remainder three on forever. Repeating. So we're just gonna do four. So that would take four closings per month on average. Okay. And then I want like four people to share. Um, what would you do with a hundred grand? <laughs> Student <laughs> loan debt. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop sharing this really fast so I can see your guys' faces again. Pay off my car. Pay off your car? Okay. Yeah. How much do you own your car? I have like seven five left. Seventy five hundred. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to check. <laughs> it's like I know some people that spend that much money on a car, like seventy five grand. It's like, good lord, Nathan, you'd know what cars cost. So you're a car guy, right? <laughs> we got yes, a car sir. Guy. Been in the car business a long time. But yeah. So, all right. So let's say, how much money do you need to live, right? Because it's not a hundred grand. If you're not making a hundred grand right now, it's not how much you guys need to make. You're talking, you're asking me. Yeah, sure. Anybody. Yeah. So I, I need to make more than a hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, I want to make probably so any, at least go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I was going to say, well, if let's, but you know how much it would be. So that's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, I want to make at least $200,000, you know, uh, early in my career and, and go up from there is my goal. So 
Nope. So it's what, uh, like 80 houses, 80 closings. I just yep. doubled that one since that was a hundred, but that should be, that should scale. Um, let's say like, how much am I raising my hand? What? Did I raise my own hand? Can you guys see that? Yeah. I think you high-fived yourself. Nice, dude. I don't even know. Oh, I raised my hand on my other computer. Okay. Nice. So um, how much money on average, what do you think you guys need? 40, 50? Like closings? No, sorry. Good, good clarifying question, right? Ask clear questions and you actually get answers. Um, how much money do you need per year to live? Because like right now we want a hundred grand, but we don't need a hundred grand to live. Most of us. I need like right. my goal structure off of 72. Okay. And then of that 72, how specific and clear were you with what encompasses that 72? Uh, 20 of it is debt. And then like, I think 12,000 of it is bills I have right now projected and the rest is just investing or like cushion money. Yeah. So when you guys are looking at this and this is just how I do it, you can do it. If that works for you, rock and roll that. Like, I'm not saying you're doing it wrong and I need you to know that that's not what I'm saying. Okay. For me, I needed to know because I needed the number to mean something to me personally. So I had to associate some sort of pain with it. And I knew that if I did not make at least $3,000 a month, I would have to go get a real job. Right? Yes. So if I, did, if I did not make this much money, I was in trouble. And then everything on top of that, I had to allocate and give a purpose to. And then that was the debt payments. That was the, I want to pay off my car. I want to, but I, I, I say all that because it's like, okay, so let's say that's how I did it. I did that and I raised my hand because it's telling me I want to raise my hand again. Um, but what it's saying basically, let's say it's 50 because it will do easy math, right? So that's 50 grand. And then somebody said they had to pay off a car for like 7,500, but to keep the math simple, right? And I'm doing the exact thing, the exact thing I said we shouldn't do, <laughs> right? is you now you've got 40 grand to allocate. What can you do with that money? Like, let that be the thing that, that motivates you. Let that be the thing that's like, oh, that's fun. I could do, I could pay off my car. I could go buy an investment house. I could go buy, you know, because then you, you know you're taken care of financially and it allows you to think bigger. Right. And then you actually know that you'll have the funds to do the things that you want to do. And guys, they will change. I don't even know which camera to look into at this point. So if I'm, I don't even know, but um, your goals are going to change. Everything is going to change and it's completely okay that it does. It's okay. Just make sure that when it changes, the things that you're doing also change. Okay. Could you change, like, could you legit, I found my face. Could you change your life with 50 grand? Oh yeah. Right. Yes. Like one of the reasons I don't like that, the five people you surround yourself with question uh, is because I, at the very beginning, I surrounded myself with dudes that talked about like airplanes and stuff. I found myself in that room and I felt like a big piece of shit for a long time. Cause I was like, dude, I'm selling like 12 homes. Like right now, like I'm not on a, a track to sell. Like you're, you're making so much money. I'd have to, I have to find a way that, Oh, how do I do that? So should have bought an RC plane. Right. <laughs> that would have been good. I was too busy. I was in my own feelings at the time. I was like, I don't even know what to do. How do I do this? Because at the time guys, 50 grand was enough to completely change my world. Completely change my world. And so if, if you're more of a, I don't like pain, but I love seeking pleasure because as humans, we are always running from pain or seeking pleasure. It's something we do not escape ever. Which one motivates you more? For me, it's pain, right? So can I, can I make enough money so that my wife doesn't have to work? No, I don't. Dallas, I saw you unmute yourself. What you got, bud? Uh, I was going to say, it's definitely a pain. It's like, what can I get done now? Get out of the way. What can I solve now? So 
I don't feel bad about myself. Dude, thanks for being real. Like that's like a hundred percent. And I, and, and until you start thinking about these questions, you're not supposed to have the answer. That's okay. You have to spend time to think about it and then you can figure it out. It's very easy to default to money, right? Money is the easy thing to figure out. If you can, here's a business, here's some business advice. I'm gonna look right at the camera when I say this, cause now I know where I'm at. If you can make it a numbers problem, make it a numbers problem. If you can take a problem that you're having and you can make it a numbers problem, do it every time. Because then the solution becomes very easy. I need 40 transactions, right? I need 25 transactions. Can you actually do the things consistently that it takes to achieve that? That's the hard part, right? That's the stuff to work on. So the thing that I did, because somebody asked this question, to accomplish the things that I've, I have to look back on it, I don't know. Uh, I, I worked on myself. That was the thing that I sat down and I decided to do because I had done everything else. I had done all of the, okay, so I know how to manage people. I know sales. I understand this. I understand, okay, I get it. And for whatever reason, it's not working. Well, it turns out uh, when you're a clown all the time, right? People don't take you serious all the time. Okay. So I have to learn to be, take myself more seriously. Okay. Well, how do I do that? So the end goal for me, and it's still the goal that I have, right? So the reason I'm selling real estate to do all these things is it's, it always boils down to a personal, a personal thing for me. And it's not motivation. It's not that I'm feeling fired up for the time being. And motivation serves its purpose, right? I truly believe that it's all about skill acquisition. And that's it. Like if there's one thing that you can take away from this when it comes to goal setting and the reason I love goal setting so much is if you know that you need to close four deals a month to afford the life to cover your bills and then change your life, right? The process is super simple. What are the things that you have to learn and do to close for a month? Does it feel that simple? I'm looking for a yes or no. So everybody's giving me a no and I love it. Anyone else? Okay, you turned off your camera again. Now I can see it's fine. I pushed you all the way to the back. That's fine. Don't undo it. So why doesn't, you're the only one that answered. So why did you think that, it, why, why, why does it not feel simple? Yeah, sorry, Edward. Yeah, uh, it's just not simple for me because I don't have any background in real estate, nor do I have friends or family in it. So I'm kind of just a blank slate, you know. I mean, I since starting this, I was thinking like one one thing to be consistent with my goal is to do like two open houses a month. But even then, I'm just like, well, what do I do at open houses? What are the paperwork that I got to fill? I have no Dude, idea. I'm come with me. Home, so. Come with me. We'll do open houses. I'm doing open houses. I'd love to. There you go. There you go. Um, when it comes to the skill acquisition part, this is the this is the beautiful the beautiful thing. You know exactly what you need to do. You don't know how to do it, right? But what to do, you know what to do, right? I know that I need to get four closings a month to do that. And when you don't know how to do it, that's also a blessing, guys. Because you're like, well, I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. Well, you actually know what you need to learn, right? Well, I don't know how to do open houses. Perfect. Find someone that does. Oh, gosh, my calendar's blown up. Oh, I don't know how to manage my money. Perfect. Find someone who does. I'm not good at scripts. Great. Find someone who is. If you, can, if you can make your default mode, I'm going to learn. And I, and I, I don't want this to be, I've, I've talked about this for a long time, 
like the past a year, a year and a half or so. And some people walk away feeling really fired up and other people are like, man, what a waste of time. And it's like, ah, I just didn't do it justice. And I wish that if I, if that was the thing that I could put in a pill and make everyone swallow, they'd be like, oh, I understand what you're saying. I'm not going to do it, but I understand what you're saying. If you have a clear goal, it's easy to see the steps that you need to make to make that goal happen. And then once you know the steps that you have to take, you know the skills that you have to acquire to do those steps to make that goal. And then the hard part is just doing it every day. That's it. To make it sound super a, simple. I have a theory yeah. and I'm interested to see your, your thoughts on this and if mm -hmm. you like this direction. So I tend to think that it's better to not try and be like a Swiss army knife and find the things that you're good at and being a new agent, focusing on how to develop those skills, or do you feel like uh, you should really try and figure out everything? And if if you agree with my theory, how how should I create and analyze what I'm good at? You're gonna hate this. What's the goal? Well, the goal is to. Um, to be a good real estate agent. And I think to do that, I need to have some sort of focus. Um, it's gonna be easier to figure out three or four things that I can be good at and have uh, to exponentially get better faster as opposed to working on 20 things and getting faster much slower or yeah. getting better slower. 100%. Um, I want to make sure that, I, uh, that this is clear because that's a good question. My head is going in 13 different directions. So the thing that makes growth and goal setting and goal planning hard is that you have a finite amount of time, um, but your brain doesn't view things that way, right? And this is why I don't like motivation because right now you're going to be more motivated to do anything because you're on a Zoom call uh, and you want to achieve these things. And so you're, you're thinking grandiose, like this is the thing that I want to do. And then we're saying, think bigger, you know, think, think, big. it's like, you know how much time that would take? Like you only have, there's only 24 hours in a day. Let's assume you get eight hours of sleep. That's 16 hours a day. You know, do you want to be somebody that is really good at several things or not great at anything? but you understand a lot, right? And I think for me personally, uh, I don't want to understand. I want to be really good at like five things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, really good at five things. Um, but I have other friends that they just love learning. Like that, like the thing that makes them happy, dude, is they would love to go like, I don't know, 10 feet deep on a thousand different topics. Uh, I would rather go a hundred feet deep on like five topics. Seems tougher to implement. It would seem tougher to implement something as far as developing the more moving parts you get. No, yeah. I mean, let's in, once again, if you can make it a math problem, make it a math problem. So if there's 16 hours a day and you really want to get good at something, how much time do you have to actually learn the skills that you need so that you can actually achieve the goals that you want to achieve? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I'm looking out, it's like, I think, I think people understand that. Like, if you don't, you have to be realistic. Like, I don't want to say don't dream big, because I absolutely do. But you only have so much time. So like last year, for instance, I'm just going to, this is how this was. Uh, I had the coaching program that I was a part of that was taking 25 to 30 hours a week. I had the real estate team, which was performing at a very high level, because Justin, you said efficiency is the thing that you like. Efficiency and productivity are the things that I really enjoy, um, which is why goal setting, I think, is so important. And then in my personal business, right? So there's three businesses right there. Well, then I also manage property, and then I also want to be an investor, right? I also want to be a really good friend of the people that I care about, and then I also want to be a great husband. Well, I also want to take time for my family, 
Like you don't get to do all of them. You just don't. And if you don't have a goal that's important to you, you don't know how to prioritize all the things that you want to do. For instance, um, let's see, Christian, are you still on here? He is not. Okay. I don't think anybody else on here was in the coaching program. Uh, has anybody had any interactions with Brian Stone? I'm in the coaching program. Excellent. Yeah, is Brian time. Stone, a, is he a family guy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. He's got a son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. everything that brian does and when i say this so understand that brian and i actually co-led a team together we split ways and then we continue to manage the coaching program together um and when i say this it, i don't i want to want to put it on record i guess because i don't want it to be misinterpreted mad respect for that guy because everything brian does is predicated on how it impacts his family because his most important goal is his family Okay. For me personally, my most important goal right now is building like generational wealth. And so if you put him and I in a room together, that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to make money or he doesn't want to build wealth. Uh, you should feel a different intensity from both of us because it requires different levels of like he, he's focusing on being a great dad and husband. I want my wife to love me and, and continue to be with me, but also like I'm trying to kick ass here. Him and I can't allocate our times the same way. Does it make sense? Okay. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was like, because I hope I just didn't go on a rampage and it made no sense. All right. I'm going to jump back into, I don't know, what time does this end? Do you guys know? I'm going to check my calendar here and I'll be able to tell you. It's in at 1230. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bust the rest of these slides and then for the, until the last 20 minutes, because I, by the way, I'm going to be chugging water. So I'm not trying to ignore you guys. Um, the next 22 minutes after we bust through the slides, whatever questions you guys have, if you guys need goal setting help, I want to, I want to leave that up to you guys. And I'm trying not to answer my phone right now because it's on my iPad and it's going crazy. So I did that disappeared, but I'm still here. So slideshow wise, can you guys see the slideshow again? Yes. Thank you. Uh, set your goals in command. If you guys need help with this, I'm not the guy to help you because uh, I don't do it. Um, and I'm, I just don't. I should. I really should. I don't have my goals set in command um, because I know exactly how I've been tracking on a different spreadsheet. But command is an incredible tool that you should use if you can, because it really will tell you the fallout rates and the conversion percentages and all the actual data that you need for your numbers. Um, it does it all for you. I think that I, can you guys still hear me? I'm just making sure my phone stopped buzzing and then. Yeah. Ah, thank you, David. I appreciate you. Uh, so we're going to move past this, do the right activities. The 80-20 principle. Are you guys familiar with this principle? If not, Keller Williams will run this into the ground with you. Thank goodness that they do um, because it is super important. 20% of the things that you do create 80% of the results. And that is so true. If you can focus the 20% of the thing, if you can focus on the 20%, if you can spend hundred percent of your time, focus on the 20%, that's rocket fuel. I mean, that will make you go so fast. And if you can make sure that the 20% that you're focusing on is in alignment to the goals, to the thing that you want to achieve, you will get there way faster than you thought. For instance, my wife and I, we wanted 35 units by the time that we were 45. I'm 32. I got my license three years ago. I started watching investing stuff a year before that. We needed $7,200 a month in passive income. And then that would afford Sarah and I the life that we wanted. Okay. So the 20% that I focused on was like, what can I do to get that? Um, and we're done. And it's been three years. Like 
It's super, super powerful. Uh, what is one thing that you can do right now to make everything else easier or unnecessary? And this has to be specific to your goal. And this is in the one thing. And guys, this book is really, really good. Take your time reading through it whenever you figure out what the goal is that you want, because um, I wish this is a class that we taught because I think it's just so, so important. The biggest thing that you guys can do is understand what to say no to and then understand what to say yes to. Especially in real estate, you are going to get so many opportunities for so many different things and they all work really well for certain people. And that will ping pong you around from thing to thing because it's going to be, oh, open houses work. Well, this doesn't work. No, it just takes time, right? You have to choose the goal that you want and then you have to do something consistently. And then look at the data over a quarter, right? Did you do the thing consistently and did it pay off? If the answer is no, then change. So what is the one thing that you can do right now that would make everything else easier or necessary? Before you say yes to something, do you have to say yes to it? Because if it doesn't push you towards your goal, the answer should be no. Like if we could have a class on just like decision-making for business owners, I think that would be super smart. I think it'd be super smart because it's so hard, especially if you don't have experience with it. Um, and that's why I love this building as much as I do, because if you guys have business questions or you guys need advice, you can come talk to me. You can talk to Rachel. You can talk to Nicole. You can talk to anybody in this office and they will truly try and figure out if it is a good business move for you or someone else. Whew. I'm going to jump off of that. Uh, lead generation. So this is your 411, right? So this is based off your conversion percentages. And you already know how much money you want to make and you already know how many units you need to close. Now, the thing that you have to find out and you can use industry averages if you want to, how many appointments do you need to go on to close one? And that's close an appointment. So that means you get the client. And then how long does it take you to close a client? And, and people use meetings and appointments interchangeably. I had a ton of coffee meetings, but I had very few appointments, right? Because my meetings, when I take my coffee meetings, I'm actually trying to learn something, a skill that allows me to get better at the thing that I want to do. Because for me, selling real estate is how I get to do what I do. And there's a, there's a difference there. Um, the appointment is when you're actually talking about real estate. Okay. So of those appointments, how many do I need to make sure that I can get? Basically, what you're trying to figure out is how many appointments do I need to get so I can actually close four deals a month? And this is insanely hard for somebody that's just now getting into real estate or switching careers because most of your business is going to come from your sphere. And it's going to be completely contradicting because you're going to get, you're going to go to an open house. You're going to want to get leads and deals and you're going to do all of those things. And then someone's from your sphere is going to say, Hey, you have your, your license. Can you just help me? And then you're going to want to focus on that. And it's super, super easy. It's been three years. And this is to put a period on something I started from the beginning. I haven't gone through my entire sphere yet. And there are people that love me and there are people that don't like me at all. So you can absolutely go through that way. You just have to figure out your own con conversion percentages. Uh, write this down next to the sheet somewhere so you can go through it. If you're not closing four deals a month, you're not doing enough appointments, period. It's a very simple way to look at it. Okay. Uh, and it's not 100% accurate either, but just know uh, it takes time. It's a lead lag measure game, but... If you're doing five appointments a month and nothing's coming and you need money faster, you need to do more appointments. That's what I'm saying. And then at some point you'll find a sweet spot and I can help you figure all that out. Um, but it has to be specific to you. I don't want to do averages. I don't want to do like commission averages is fine, but I don't want to do goal averages because I don't want you to latch onto something that I'm saying that doesn't serve the goal that you want. Does that make sense? I'm looking for a yes or no from somebody. Okay. You get some very hesitant, like, this is crazy. What is this guy talking about? 
yes. uh, don't like things. <laughs> yeah. Like it goes Everybody back else. to that, that, uh, that chart, that little graph that you put up a, 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 like an hour ago that we were like, I don't really know what the hell this means, but what mm-hmm. you just said, like makes sense. Like, and that ties in with the 2080 model. Like if you want those big goals, right. You break it down into exactly what you want to do. Exactly. Like, like, so if, if you go to the extremes of each axis and if that's really where you want to be, well, then you got, like you said, you got to go on more appointments. You got to close more deals and, and literally that will get you there. It's just like about changing the mindset, to, right. To structure your entire day around it. What's the one thing that you want? If the one thing that you want is to get, I don't think it's going to offend anybody, but if you want to get fuck you money, uh, then you have to do all those. You have to do the one thing to get you there. You have to make sacrifices and, and you got to set those appointments and get there. Sorry if I offended anybody there, but. I don't think you did. I was like, we're all agents. So there's a specific type of person that lives here. If, um, but that's, that's hundred percent correct. And just make sure that they feed into each other. That's like, that's my biggest thing. Uh, that's the four one one. Don't lose your focus. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. Okay. Like, so this is the difference between motivation. This is what I was trying to touch on there because if, if, uh, if I say, you know, do you want your world to be big enough to help other people? Of course, but I don't get to pay my bills next month. Okay. Then your, why should be, I need to take care of my stuff right now. And that should be, I mean, you should have enough focus to stay on top of it that way. But as it grows bigger and the pressure becomes less and less and less, make sure you understand why you're building the thing that you're building. And really, until you take care of yourself, you're really not going to be able to think about other people, I don't think. Uh, accountable people achieve results others can only dream of. Okay. Uh, this is a quote from the one thing. Basically, if people around, if you cannot hold yourself accountable, find somebody that will. If you cannot hold yourself accountable, either It's not that you're lazy. It's not that you can't achieve anything. It's not that you can't win. It's not that you're a loser. Um, It's just you're not being held accountable or you don't know why you want to do what you do. Uh, Recap and ahas. So, uh, and then we're supposed to talk about scripts and stuff for an hour, but I told you we probably weren't going to do that. So uh, are there any ahas or questions because we have a, and guys, I will actually stay 15 to 20 minutes after this. If you guys, if, I mean, at 12:30, get the heck out of here if you're tired of being here. Because I'm, I'm, there's some trainings where that's me. Um, but I was 20 minutes late, so I'm going to stay 20 minutes. So if you guys need me, I'm going to be here. Um, but I'm done with scripts. I'm done following a. I wasn't really following it the whole time. What questions do you guys have? Do you guys have any take? Well, give me three takeaways, and then we'll go into questions. Stay on top of things and ask yourself the hard questions. Mm, Be more specific. Be on top of what you want to do. And this is what I'm... You're okay, man. You're good. Uh, Stay on top of the things you need to do to get to the future that you want. There you go. And ask yourself the questions that will help you lead to getting to the life you want. I like that one better. Thanks for the aha, by the way. This is always the most terror, like terrifying part. You're like, hey, did you guys learn anything or is this just a waste of everybody's time? I'm Next not up. sure if, uh, if it was yours or part of it, but it seems like the what is the goal needs to always be the top thing. And if you can't answer that, like everything ties into that. Yeah, it's always a backwards process. Like if you're starting from the beginning and trying to figure out what the goal is, you will... You will fall short every time because you're doing it backwards. I don't know, but that's a good takeaway. I don't know if it was here or somewhere else, but I'm glad you said it because I like that. Well, I didn't know. I mean, it felt like it was maybe yours specifically, and I don't know if it had to do with like the slides of the class or just how you approach it. I know they just redid this, and I'm trying to stay on. I don't know if it feeds into other things, um, but yeah, I can relate to that super hard. Um if you, if you can't say it in clearly in one sentence, then it's not clear enough. And if it's not clear enough, everything that you're doing between now and then is just like, uh, 
what are we, what are we doing? Which has made me super impatient with people, which is terrible. Like if someone walks in and they're like, Hey, I want to make a hundred gram. Like, great. How, why, what's important. They're like, mm-hmm. and they don't want to do anything about it. I'm like, boy, I, apparently that's a new thing that I have. Cause I don't want to talk to you. Good Lord. Like if you're not willing to take the, the steps or learn the skills that you need to learn, like, Oh Lord almighty. So I agree with that. I need one more. Are you, are you saying that lunch is not on next week because I annoy you? <laughs> no, dude. Lunch is completely <laughs> on. And you're willing to do the things that it takes. You're willing uh, to go and try and learn the things that you need to learn. All right. Some people all right, aren't even willing uh, to do that. No, I, you're good. I, I, that wasn't, I felt the same way yet. when you said that. I was like, ooh, <laughs> talk about me. No, let me, let me also touch on that for just a second. No one does this. This is why this is like, um, I was really excited that they asked me to teach this class. I was really bummed out when they gave me a curriculum because <laughs> what I wanted to do was take all this time and go through this with everyone and to be like, okay, what's the goal that you want? Because no one actually sits down and helps specify the goal, but that's as an agent, that's what you're going to do with your clients all day long. Yeah, I really want a three, two, two. Yeah, but how much space do you need? Oh, we need 700 square feet. Great. You're not going to get a three, two, two. Right, you're gonna. We're looking at a two one. Oh, we need two thousand square feet. Okay. Right. Well, I want acreage. Okay, great. What about the acreage? Do you want? No, I don't want any neighbors. Great. What you actually want is privacy. Right. Like, that's absolutely our job as agents is to help our clients understand the things that they want, and then it just also translates to goals. So there's. Um, if anybody feels called out, please don't feel called out. It's the people, and you will find these clients for sure. It's the people that you say, hey, this is the thing that, that can help you. And they go, yeah, I don't actually want to do that. I just want to stay at home and work on my kill-death ratio on Call of Duty, bro. Those are the people that I can't stand. But what was the aha, man, if you were about to say something? Did you have one, or was it just... Okay, so I need one more. Uh, for a month. For a month. That, that, that's a number. That's a solid number. Yeah. that quantifies it. Of course. And Christina and Mark can help you figure out because they have, they have systems and processes. I need for a month. If that's 10 appointments a month, then you need to do everything in your power. It needs to be number one. Go get it done. How do I get the 10 appointments? And if you're not converting four out of 10, what skills do you need to learn so that you can convert at least four out of 10 and then work on getting better? Yep. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to jump into any questions you guys have at all or more takeaways, but the time remaining is completely yours. And you can leave yeah, whenever you I'll want to leave as well. Sure. Go for it. All right, Blake. Is that uh, how many water bottles is that? This is the third one, dude. And I'm, I'll be honest with you. I got to go to the bathroom really bad, but I'm going to make it. <laughs> I, I bet. Um, I've asked this to, I think everybody now. Um, I'm really, I'm just curious what professionals are reading. So do you have any reading recommendations or, or what are you mm. reading at the moment? Good Lord. I do. Kay, do you know what the book is that I would recommend the first book? The go giver. That book, man. Is such a it's such a good book. It, it's maybe a three to five hour read. Is that fair to say, Kay? Yeah. I mean, it's maybe really there's not quick. a ton of pages in it. Yeah. Uh, tell them what you liked about it. Um, don't give away too much. Okay. Um, I really like the perspective it gave me. It was very humbling, I think. So it just really gives you a new way to look at business, I think. And um yeah, that's pretty much what I liked about it. I mean, it just gave me a whole new perspective or it, it really brought me back to my core values, I think. I love that. Um, so, and this is where we'll, we'll probably pivot away from numbers um, because they're super important, but I don't, um, that you have to be a good person. Like if you've been a terrible person your entire life and then you're trying to sell real estate, bro, you better get on the phone and understand scripts and then it's time to, make a hundred phone calls so you can get the 10 appointments so that you can convert the four so that you can get like at some point um, we're all people. And so all the books that I can recommend to you are not going to be business books. 
Um, they might have business concepts that apply to business, but they won't actually be business books. So the Go-Giver by far, it's what my team is structured around. It's what I am structured around. Uh, that book is incredible. Uh, Never Split the Difference is another book. Um, that's great. Like if, if you've read the book, um, you know, Get to Yes, I think is the sales book. Never Split the Difference is the opposite of that. And it's how I made sales without realizing how I was making sales. Um, and that was written by the lead hostage negotiator of the FBI. He was the, uh, he was the lead whenever <clears throat> they executed the first hostage. They took the hostage with the intent to kill it, to kill them. Um, so they had to completely redo the entire thing. It's actually getting people to say no. And uh, that was, that's helped personal relationships. That's helped uh, business. That's helped absolutely everything. Uh, the book I'm reading right now is The Brain and How It Changes Itself. Um, not to get super uh, not out of business, but I think neuroscience is one of the, if you can start learning about that stuff now, it is one of the best thing that you can do. Um, and you don't have to, like neuroscience is not super crazy. It's nothing, it's nothing nuts. But brain plasticity, um, when you realize that everyone's brain functions the same way that yours does, it really diminishes your shame or whatever I ADD bro. I am hundred <laughs> percent. So that's, what's so crazy. So like right now I'm on enough Adderall to like kill my wife, probably like, like she <laughs> like, cause the way the brain works is nuts. Like I was just teasing because I think everybody's brain doesn't work like yours and m mine. And I am also, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it? But it's a beautiful thing. Like, so, and I won't, I won't go on this, this whole, this whole tangent, but, um, you know, finding out ADHD because I was listening to the brain, I was like, this doesn't, this doesn't make sense. Right. And then you figure out how the brain works. And so actually, oh, okay, well that's, that's where my brain is different. Right. But it allows you to do these different things. And then any, any book you can read on mindset at all, please read. And so on the ADHD part, I, I think this is a good example of something. So uh, I told a friend, I was like, hey, you know, I have ADHD. And they're like, oh, we all do. I'm like, well, it's a little different. It's actually a thing. Um, so the, you can, what's the best thing? And he goes, well, that's what it was. He said, dude, I'm sorry that you have that. I was like, what do you mean you're sorry that I have that? And he goes, well, it means it's really hard for you to focus. Like, I think I know what it is and that's really tough. And I said, okay, yes, no. That's, um, and I say he's a buddy of mine. We're, we're competitors. Like we like competing with each other. That's what makes us friends. If we didn't have something to compete over, I don't know that we would ever talk to each other. Um, and he was basically like, Hey man, you know, it's just, it's just tough. Cause what he was basically saying was, and he, he said this, so these are, I'm not going to tell you his name, but it was like, uh, you just, you just made it not as fun to beat you is essentially what he said. Right. And so I was sitting there, I was like, well, how do I figure this out? Right. So Earlier, I mentioned I've spent a lot of time learning skills, right? I think everything is about skills, skill acquisition and mindset. And so my immediate response, which just means that I was growing and this feels great. It was like, bro, I beat you last year. Like you're playing football on a football field with football pads and I'm playing uh, soccer on an ice rink with a Frisbee. <laughs> but awesome. now I'm playing football on a football field with football pads. Like don't like try to keep up and it's a beautiful, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's not a, it's not a bad thing or a negative thing at all. And so I can literally say, and I feel completely comfortable in that. And it's taken years guys. Hey, uh, help me make sure I drink these tea. If I go on a tangent, please bring me back so I can put a period on something. Cause it's not that I don't know what to say. So uh, brain plasticity and neuroscience is, is incredible. So I'm currently reading a book, uh, the brain and how it changes itself because it allows you to realize and actually understand how it all functions and how we're truly similar, but good, good job. Cause you actually, that means that, you know, that the brain is different from other brains. That's cool to know. And there's a thousand other books that I've read for sure. Like, can you provide, if, can you provide your phone number or email address so we can reach you outside of this? Absolutely. Um, and I think, let's see if I kind of, where's a chat? There's a chat in here somewhere. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm. Ah, there we go. Um, this is my email. Like cookakw.com. And this is my phone number. Um, 
And if you guys want to grab coffee, I prefer coffee. Uh, why isn't that working? Here we go. Um, because I don't have a ton of time. Um, <clears throat> I have all my time allocated out. Um, 30 to 45 minutes is what I have. I do have time built out for this because it's important to me that I can help other people with this stuff specifically. So when we reach out, I might try and schedule anything unless it's like an emergency. If it is an emergency, text me and I'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, but it, I'm like three or four weeks out. So it's not that I'm just like, no, I don't want to talk to you. It's like legitimately, it's that far out. What else you I'm guys gonna got? Take we got 15 minutes. Blake. You're good, dude. Thank you, Thank sir. you for the questions and thanks for input. Anybody else? And then there I have were a question one, two, for you. Four. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so obviously you had an exceedingly successful first year, 30 deals. That's awesome. Rookie of the year. Awesome. Um, I'm assuming that it took you a little bit of time to ramp up. So my question is to us who are new agents, what would you recommend or what would you do differently from day one that may have taken you three or four months before you figured it out? Uh, and thanks for all of your input as well. Oh, you always, man. Um, so for me, it was, I would say, understanding the difference between a meeting and an appointment. Um, Cause it's, that's such a, it's such a fine line. Um, especially when you want to build your business through your sphere. Um, but I think I went on a lot of things that I was calling appointments and they were actually meetings and meetings can bring business, but I, and I didn't, I didn't distinguish between the two. And so eventually I actually started, if someone would bring up real estate, um, I would say, Hey, let's actually set another time for that. Cause I'm actually not here for, I'm not here to learn about, I'm not, I'm not here to answer your real estate questions. I want to be that person. Right. And there were some situations where you can absolutely answer the question, but I never wanted anybody that I was talking with to feel like I was talking with them because of real estate. And so I was really focused on meetings and I probably left a lot of appointments on the table. Probably wouldn't have taken me so long to ramp up, I think. So how, how would you be more intentional though about that? Like I, you've talked before about setting up a, a meetings, appointments, you know, for coffee how do you, mm -hmm. how do you, you know, elaborate, I guess, a little bit on that. On how I set the meeting or. Yeah. I mean, about how you set the meeting and then how you were intentional about, you know, later on how you were more intentional about whether it's an appointment or a meeting. I think the first time I met you, you talked a lot about how you would want to interact with your sphere and you would invite them out to coffee, but then you didn't at all want to talk about real estate. I mean, the goal was to make them feel comfortable and, and you're genuinely interested in them. So mm -hmm. I guess maybe just elaborate a little bit more about that. Yeah, dude, for sure. I wasn't sure. I, honestly, I wasn't sure if that's what you were alluding to. Good job for remembering that. Thanks for listening. That feels good. Absolutely. Um, so I think um, that's really hard. It's a really fine line to toe. And for me, I actually had to draw the pay. Hey, if this is a, if this is like an immediate need, let me know. But the people that you're going to get business from in your sphere, you're only going to get the business because they know, like, and trust you. That's the only reason you're going to get it. And so if you do anything um, that violates that, and I say that, you know, if, if, if you make them feel like, Hey, all of a sudden you're a paycheck to me, um, you're taking away years worth of stuff that you've built trust that you've built up with them. Um, because now all of a sudden you're using them or they feel like you're using them. And the interesting thing is you can literally call them and say, Hey, look, um, I need a referral. Like if I'm calling somebody in my sphere and it's not a, I'm here to have fun call. I literally tell them, Hey, this is a business call, you know? And so then they're actually listening to what I'm saying. So it was, for me, it was finding a way to make sure that they knew which me they were getting. Um, because business me is very different from personal me there. Um, it's becoming more one and the same as to how it all functions. But, um, I would say that I'm only actually working in the business. I don't know that I'm ever actually working in the business. I'm meeting people. And if I like you, then awesome. I think, 
uh, I found lenders and uh, affiliate insurance people that I really like. And then eventually I've earned their business over time. And then when you earn their business, you earn the business of everyone that they know. And so I, I don't, I, I truly don't understand why anybody would try and build a business any other way. Um, and so if you can, if you can sit down, you have to feel it out on the appointment, you know, so if you sit down and you can feel like they're having coffee to talk to you about real estate, I say, make an appointment all day long. Um, but if you call them and you set the appointment, if you set a meeting and you're setting an appointment, they need to know that it's an appointment. Did that answer the question? So that was a good yeah, question. It, I want to make sure. It, it okay. does answer my question. I, my big hang up is I have done a little bit of telemarketing before I've been in sales and customer service my entire life. I feel exceedingly comfortable to talk to other people. However, what I struggle with is my sphere of influence, my uh, people that I like, I don't want to come across as salesy. You know, I, I, I want to be successful. I want them to use me because they want to use me and not because they use me because they feel obligated to use me. And I just struggle with how to communicate with people that I know and like and I'm friends with. I mean, my very close friends, obviously, no problem. But I'm talking about people that I've been an acquaintance with and maybe I haven't talked to them in seven years and we're friends on Facebook. Like, how do I how do I get interested in or how do I get start talking to them and not make it feel salesy and not make it just be like, OK, well, yeah, we've been friends for seven years and we haven't talked in seven years. But now all of a sudden he's in real estate. Now he wants to talk to me and have coffee. You know, I mean, that's what I struggle yeah. with, I guess. No, dude. So um, try and say in one sentence the part that makes uh, calling those people that you've known for seven years, that makes it hard. I want to come across as genuine and not salesy. Why is that? Uh, I would say it's important to me how uh, people in my sphere of influence view me and how they think about me. That's important to me. Okay. And why is, why, um, like, what makes that so important? Like, well, I guess, why is it important that they view you that, like, not as salesy? I would say that's just my personal goal. I, I mean, I would rather... Uh, well, let me just backtrack to the car business. I was in the car business for 18 years, exceedingly mm -hmm. successful, and I never reached out to anyone in my sphere and tried to get them to purchase a car from me, whether I was in management or actually in sales. If they reached out to me, obviously, I was thrilled. I was happy to help them and all that, but I wanted it to be their idea, not my idea. Well, obviously, real estate is a little bit different. Like I need people in my sphere to to do business with me. So I guess that's where I struggle because for 18 years I was successful without doing that. And now mm -hmm. I know I need to do that. So like, I know I have to get comfortable with it, but I guess I just, you know, obviously you've done a great job and you're exceedingly comfortable with it. I'm just hoping to lean on you and, and find something in myself that I can then make myself more comfortable with it. Um, I would spend some time and try and figure out what the i'm going to say fear or hang up or because it's not a like it's not a fear of rejection right like that's that's an that's an easy thing to figure out um you know if your people did view you that way they wouldn't be your people right so sure. you it's and it's tough because you have to ask for the business right because it is sales at the end of the day um but i would I would have you start thinking in a, I would, if you can start thinking as a relationship guy and not through a business lens, because with real estate specifically, and it sounds like the car business too. Um, the thing that I'm actually selling is my network. Yeah. Right. So, and I can say this now being three years in, you know, I, I want you to call me when you have a real estate need because I can help you. Like, yes, I get paid for it and I get paid well for it as I should. Um, but when you need it, I'm here always. Um, and then because it's important to you, just never push a sale. You know, if someone says I'm not ready right now, I'd be like, okay, is there anything that I can, I'm happy to wait for you, right? Because is there anything that I can do from now until you're ready to make you like to help you? Um, 
and then help them through that process. I mean, it's, if you can, because it sounds like you're a relationship guy and you're trying to mash relationship and business together. And it's literally so impossible to do because uh, business is numbers. Business is, 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 is quantifiable numbers. Um, relationships is actually how you make sales, right? It's how you get business. And yet it's not quantifiable, right? Like I can't, I can't be like, I can go on five appointments and now you trust me. Once I have your trust, I know you like me and then I will, you will use me for real estate deals. That's not how it functions. And so it's really hard to sit there and go, okay, so I know I need this much money. And I want people to like me because I know from my experience that that's the, that's the sustainable way to build a business. So the, the problem is making yourself okay with um, be a relationship guy and business will follow. And if you aren't getting the business that the amount of business that you want, you're not being a good enough relationship guy. Does that make sense? 100%. So like yeah, it does. never split the difference, the go-giver, like I'm reading all those things because it allows me to be better. Like, see Josh, Thank you. Uh, it allows me to, to frame this in different ways um, for myself and for myself really only. Um, but it, it, it mashed them together enough that I didn't feel guilty asking for the business because someone was going to help them. Right. And I, and I knew that it should be me, but I didn't want them to feel like um, they were mine. And it's so, dude, it's hard, man. And I, and I don't know uh, specifically what I did to mash the two. I would say just reading the, reading the books and just know that if you focus on the relationship, the business will come. Blake, can you Thank name you. That, Thank you. that second book you said, The Go-Giver yeah. and what else? Never Split the Difference. It's by Chris Never Voss. Never Split the Difference. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Like when it comes to Nathan, and if, you've, if you haven't read that one, that one is a very good um, step-by-step -step in how to talk to someone. Um, reading that book felt a little manipulative, <laughs> um, but it structured the conversation in a way that makes, it just, it makes a ton of sense. What was really the name cool. of the author again? Chris Voss. Okay, thanks. Let's I'll throw a link on the chat. There you go. Ever, do you got anything, man? Dayton, you guys are lingering and I love it, but just making sure. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I was just resonating a lot. Yeah, I was, I, I was resonating a lot with what Nathan was asking there. Um, it's been kind of a challenge for me as well with the, the transition, but uh, appreciate you know his thoughts and your insights on it. Always, man. It's good stuff. Okay. Any last questions? Cool. Well, Blake, I hope, thank you for uh, taking the time, man. Yeah, dude, always. I really hope that this helped in some way, shape, or form. And if you guys, there's a survey here at the end. Um, I believe it's a, I think, if you guys will take that, because we, let me see here. You guys all have your phones on you. Yeah. I believe they actually did a good thing right here. I should have asked for this at the beginning um, before everybody left. You can snap a photo of that. Oh, let me know. And please give me some real feedback. Um, I, I hope to ask everybody that took this class. Like, this is something that I'd like to get better at. So give me the good, bad, and the ugly. And if that's <laughs> all you guys had, I'm going to move about the cabin and the day. And I will catch you guys later. Go Chiefs. Thank, Chiefs. Thank you, Blake. Go Chiefs, dude, for sure. You bet, man. <laughs> hey, thank you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Yeah. Nicole, do you need me to stop recording or how do you need this to end on your end? <laughs> hey, while you're waiting on her, how about, how about 13 seconds? How do you feel about 13 yeah. seconds? Yeah, what's 13 seconds? That's enough time. That's enough time for Patrick to get a uh, oh, I field goal, yeah, yeah. Field goal check nice. down. How about that? That was absolutely, that was a, dude, I, like, it was so crazy. That was so crazy. My throat hurts. Yeah, it blew my voice out for sure. Absolutely I woke up, insane. I was like, I, re, I rediscovered uh, cough drops this morning. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart for sure. I was like, my headphones just died. It's perfect timing. All right, man. Thank you. See ya. You bet, man. See ya. Let me get in touch with Nicole.